My stoic father never wanted to be a burden to anyone in life or in death. Yet here I am carrying this former Marine on my shoulders through the Rocky Mountains. His ashes fill a snack sized plastic baggie stowed in the top of my backpack, a zippered pouch called the brain. It's where I keep my valuables, including cash, driver's license, Colorado search and rescue card, and a 100 calorie portion of my dad. My father was a dead ringer for a young Charlton Heston, handsome in his dark blonde crew cut with a strong jaw, broad shoulders, and powerful calloused hands the size of dinner plates. Dad worked hard to put food on the table, and when he walked into the house after a long day at the metal fabricating shop, we mobbed him at the door. He would stagger through the kitchen, laughing with kids hanging off his neck, clinging to his back and hugging his legs. Although I grew up hiking with my dad, we never did much camping. So tackling a five week solo backpacking trip through the Colorado Rockies is new for both of us. I know dad would have loved roughing it like this. And unlike me, he would have been fearless. At night, I'm convinced every twig snap is a mountain lion padding through camp to break my neck as I sleep. And when my imagination runs wild, I unzip the brain and pull out dad's ashes, a talisman to drive away my fears. Tonight is no different. His cremated remains are light gray powdery ash, like the soft fluff at the bottom of a cold campfire ring mixed with hard skeletal bits of my dad that refused to burn. As I burrow into my sleeping bag, I rub a piece of dad's bone between my thumb and forefinger through the double bagged plastic, a child with a security blanket. I think about my flesh and bone father and the tattoo on his left bicep, a topless hula dancer whose bare feet peeked out from under his short sleeved work shirt. Dad got the tattoo in Honolulu before he shipped out to Midway Island at the end of World War II. The hula girl held one hand behind her long hair, the other arm outstretched in a graceful line, forever poised and ready. Make her dance, daddy, make her dance, I'd squealed in delight as a little girl, and my dad always obliged by flexing his arm, making the hula girl's grass skirt bounce and sway over his muscles. My mom despised that hula girl like an old trashy girlfriend, the topless exotic dancer forever under dad's skin beckoning him back to the days before a wife and kids and bills had tied him down. Back to the bold days of his youth when he had slept on the deck of a troop ship at night, a breeze cooling his sun-kissed face as he sailed across the Pacific. The hula girl was his constant companion, an indelible mark of independence and adventure, dancing with him beneath starry skies.